What we have on this occasion, at this time, in the show, is the great... I like that. You like that? They're very, very quick today, the audience, Darren, aren't Hello, they? Hello, there's a routine developing, I can tell. Yeah. There's a no, I want to say quick the, routine. The way they picked that up straight away, uh, <laughs> fabulous stuff. Let us just say this. We will be tonight down at Rest Point Casino You're in kidding. Hobart. Me and Moz. What? Yeah, well, we go down there. I'm going straight to the tour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Last time we were there, Moz, last time we were there, remember that really mean guy? Remember that really mean guy playing roulette? He was so mean he won $700 playing snap with a guy who started. <laughs> it's a shame someone did that joke only two weeks ago. <laughs> who was hey. that who did that? You. Who was that? Oh. It probably was, mate. You, yeah. you're overworking. You should slow down. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a beer. Yeah. Uh, so I believe. Oh, uh, and it's... <laughs> now, we don't usually do Irish jokes on this show. No. True, and I agree. This, uh, but you're going to do it anyway. Right? <laughs> this uh, New Guinea native uh, oh, my, yes. named O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> and he's died, you see. So they, the priest arrived at the house for the wake. They had the wake because he's dead, you see. And he's arrived there, and all the guests were out in the veranda, and he went inside, and there's O'Reilly laid out on the floor because he's very poor and he had no furniture at all, you see. So uh, the priest said, that's disgusting. Get a chair and put him on the chair, at least. You know, he said, second thoughts, he said, get two chairs. Let's stretch him out a bit. He said, no, he said, make it three chairs. Otherwise, he's going to sag in the middle. <laughs> so he said to the fellow, go outside and get them. So the fellow went out and he said, we need three chairs for O'Reilly. And they all went, hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Here's a quick one from Adam Tafe in Cromer in New South Wales about the guy that went up to heaven. And he's arrived in heaven. St Peter said, new rules, by the way. He said, what it is now, you don't get in for just being really, really good. You have to have done something really, 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 really good. <laughs> have you done anything really, 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 really good? Oh, he said, well, he said... Uh, Yes, he said, I, I was walking down the road and I saw four great big thugs tugging on an old lady's handbag. <laughs> he said, I went mad. I came over all, shall we say, uh, community conscious. He said, I grabbed the first guy, huge guy, kicked him in the shins. Second guy grabbed him by the nose, gave him a bit of a, a Volkswagen. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> he said, the third guy, he said, I got a bit of a flying mare on him. And, and the fourth guy headbutted him in the, in the kneecap. And he said, then I ran over and kicked their car. <laughs> St. Peter... <laughs> and uh, St. Peter said... Uh, <laughs> that's got me tossed. Where did that come from? <laughs> St. Peter said, that, now that is really, really, really good. When did that happen? He said, oh, about ten seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Come on there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got one here from uh, uh, Mrs J Bycroft from Barrick Point in New South Wales. This sergeant sent his troop of soldiers, you see, out on a camouflage mission. And he said, now I want you to go out there in the bush, camouflage yourself. He said, I don't want to see you back here until six o'clock tonight. One hour later, this soldier come in and he's dressed as a tree. And he said, what are you doing back here? He said, oh, he said, I couldn't cop it out there. He said, for starters, he said, the birds were nesting in the air. He said, the dogs were lifting their leg on me truck. He said, so I came back here, he said, especially when the two squirrels climbed up me legs and said, will we eat them now or save them for Christmas? Save them for Christmas. Bycroft, he's very funny, Bycroft. Uh, Stephen Bycroft. Kemp from Croydon sent this one in about uh, a school excursion. You know, you'd go out there and have an exciting day at the quarry looking at granite or something, you know. Well, this is a different style of thing. They took the kids from the primary school, third, fourth, fifth grade, took them off to the local racetrack to learn all about thoroughbreds and all the horses. Now, while they're there, all of a sudden, all the little boys were taken a little bit short and they wanted to go to the little boys' room. Now, the lady teacher said, all right, in your pop, I'll wait outside. 
Now, they're only about five minutes. A little kid came in and said, could you come in because I can't get up onto the, you know, the, with the little boys thing on the step to, you know, to, I, I can't, could you, could you be able to lift us up? So she said, all right. So she came in, she's lifting the little boys up onto the step, you see, one by one in the little boys' room. Eventually they got to one guy, lifted him up, couldn't help but notice he was, well, well endowed. <laughs> Dressed to the West, basically. <laughs> and she, 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 she said, she said, oh, she said, you must be in the fifth. He said, no, I'm in the eighth and I'm riding the favourite, but thanks for the lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got one here from John Gleeson in Eden in New South Wales. This uh, Aussie soldier, you see, he's uh, having a few elgaliers over in London there, and uh, he had about four hours to wait for the train, so he's had 13 or 89, you see, and he's feeling lovely. And the train's just about to pull out, so he raced out, and the train was almost out of the station, jumped into the back compartment, and it was the first class. Now, troops aren't allowed into the first class, officers only, so he sat down, two British officers opposite him. They're staring at this little Aussie digger. One of them said uh, to the other, he said, by the way, he said... Uh, Corporal uh, uh, over there, he said, uh, my name is uh, Captain Barrington Smythe, English Army, married, one son, a lawyer. The other one said, how do you do? He said, my name's uh, J. Smithington Waffle Tum. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, English Army. <laughs> he said, uh, married, uh, one daughter. She's in the legal, uh, legal business as well. A bit of silence went by and the Aussie looked around and he stared straight at him and he said, uh, Corporal Smith, Australian Army, not married, two sons, both in the English Army. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got time for one more. We've got time for one more. Here's a quick uh, one from yeah. Daryl Nicholson in Toowoomba. A nice little gag about uh, the circus. Big sign up, lion tamer wanted. This guy applied, you see. And he went in and uh, the guy said, well, normal sort of job, lion taming. Um, come and see. We have someone who's actually working out at the moment. We have two. Come and see. So I went down there. The lion came out, roaming around the cage there. All of a sudden, this beautiful woman, beautiful, tall, blonde, model-type woman, walks out in a great big cape, spins around, puts the chair down, puts down the whip, takes the cape off, Standing there in the birthday suit. <laughs> standing there in the birthday suit. Well, the lion became like a little kitten. He did. He came up, up to her feet there and just started licking the toes and the extremities and, and just lay down purring like a little kitten. You see, and the circus owner said to the guy, he said, uh, now, do you think you could do that? He said, buddy, too, right, if you get that lion out of there. <laughs> I've got, um, I've got another one here. 